I wanted to create a dimensional wood wall. I decided to use wood shims. I stained the wood shims using a water-based stain. I stained the shims in varying degrees, some with just one light coat and others with up to seven coats to make them nice and dark. I started attaching the stained wood shims to the wall using construction adhesive. I found it best to first place the long pieces in a random pattern on the wall and then overlay these with the shorter pieces. This way, I was building up the wall dimensionally as well as varying the color throughout. There were some gaps between the pieces and so I had to cover these with smaller pieces at the end. When it came to the light switch on the wall, I just worked right up to the switch and then the wall was done. For two days worth of work and about $120 in materials, I was able to transform this wall into something that I really love. If you have damaged walls like I did, this budget-friendly repair requires no drywall skills whatsoever. I ran down to the hardware store and picked up two sheets of beadboard. Then I measured and cut the beadboard down to size. I attached it to the wall with my nail gun. The next step was to add a wood border to the top. In order to finish off my beadboard accent, I added hooks. After that, I added my towels and a new shower curtain, and my quick little bathroom upgrade was complete. First thing I did was grab these brick panels. They're about $30 from Lowe's, and I'm placing them against the wall. Next, I am nailing the paneling into the wall, and of course you could use something like liquid nails if you would like. However, I decided to do nailing since it's a little bit less permanent and won't ruin the drywall underneath. Now I'm just going to use some spackling that goes from pink to white whenever it's dry, and I'm going to fill in all of the seams. Now I'm mixing various craft paints to match the color of the brick. And I'm covering up that white plaster and using a sponge to add some more texture. Also going in and lightening the color a little bit and wiping it away. Overall, I just want a lot of variety. Now in sections, I'm going to cover the wall with white paint. And then once it's dried a little bit, but still a little bit tacky, I'm going in with a wet sponge and scraping away a lot of the color. So in 48 hours, I was able to turn this cold dining room into a warm, cozy, inviting space, and I absolutely love how much character it has now. So I headed to the hardware store and picked up some 1x4s. I measured the wall and marked out where my boards would go on the wall. I made sure it was level and then used a nail gun to attach the boards vertically to the wall. Now I could measure down for the horizontal boards. Then I cut the horizontal boards and attached them. I cut the board around the outlet area and left plenty of space around it so that I wouldn't have any problem plugging things in in the future. I caulked the inside edges of my newly formed accent wall boxes. Once this dried, I sanded down the joints. I picked out a blue color that I thought would look soothing in the room, and it only cost me $30. That was the cost of the wood, since I didn't have to pay for the paint, since it's something that I reused from a previous project. I printed a deer design from my computer and traced it on a clear Ziploc bag. I cut a square hole in the cardboard box using a utility knife. Next, I taped the Ziploc bag design over the hole. Then, I placed the box in front of the wall. I turned my cell phone light on, I put it inside of the box at the opposite end as the design, and I closed the lid. Put covers over the windows. I traced the design on the wall using a pencil. Once I was done, I turned the lights back on and was ready to paint. I was careful to work from top down and left to right so I didn't smudge the wet paint. When it was completely dry, I removed the remaining pencil marks with an eraser and damp rag. And here's my stunning wall feature for only the cost of paint. It really gave this book nook a wow factor and has made two boys very happy. I fell in love with this beautiful floral fabric and I knew it would be perfect on my office wall. We measured the wall to make sure we purchased enough. We knew we needed three panels, so we had them cut accordingly. We started in the corner and used a staple gun to secure the fabric in place. After that, we used spray adhesive to ensure the fabric was well secured. Before drying starts, gently smooth out all air bubbles. Don't forget to overlap about an inch with each panel for a smooth transition and line up your patterns as best you can. Once all panels are hung, smooth and staple along the bottom about a quarter of an inch above your baseboard. Using an X-Acto knife, cut fabric starting in the top corner going down. This will help to make sure the fabric does not stretch or tear. Place your knife between the baseboard and a credit card to help you make the perfect straight line. Gently cut around any outlets using your X-Acto knife and a credit card. And there you have it, a fun and easy change to any room.